Hello, welcome to Vanderbilt University's School of Nursing Family Nurse Practitioner Program. I am Dr. Courtney Pitts, the Academic Director of the FNP Program and Co-Director of the Nurse Midwifery FNP Program. The FNP program is led by a team of nationally certified FNPs with a wealth of clinical and teaching experience. Each faculty member is active clinically, which helps us all to provide you with real world examples and data. You will get to interact with these wonderful faculty members throughout various times in the FNP program. There are four things that we will discuss in this webinar, curriculum, orientation, block schedules, and program expectations. This will help alleviate some of the anxiety you may have and answer any pertinent questions that you may have related to the program and its expectations. VUSN is a school that promotes diversity and inclusion. It is very important to us that all faculty, students, and staff feel welcomed and valued. Please know that we observe all recognized religious holy days. It is understood that these days require an absence from academic engagements. You will receive additional information at orientation on what to do if you have an academic conflict with your respective holy day. Program entry routes. There are four entry routes into the FNP program. Non-nursing, also known as pre-specialty, is a student without a nursing background. ASN ADEN Diploma is a registered nurse with an associate's degree in nursing. BSN is a registered nurse with a bachelor's of science in nursing. PMC is a post-master certificate student. This student already holds a master's in nursing. This nursing degree may be clinical or non-clinical, such as an education degree, and they may also be in the program with those who may have applied through the DMP program and are required to complete the postmaster certificate before beginning the DMP program. Please know that during the FMP program, faculty serve six specialties during the course of the year. This means that you will engage with students from various specialties within the master's level program. This provides you the unique opportunity to build a network of future colleagues in various specialties in case you need to consult about a particular problem, disease, or issue. Take advantage of this time. Also, understand that expectations within the program will include consideration of all these specialties, their program of study within each course, and just not one particular specialty. The FMP curriculum is composed of 40 credit hours with the focus being on primary care. It includes didactic and clinical courses focused on the scope of practice of the FNP. There are no courses focused on subspecialties and electives may vary depending on faculty, student enrollment, and required prerequisites. MSN core and clinical core courses are required to be taken by all MSN students. These courses include the professional formation series with the exception of post-master's certificate students who have a clinical degree. Post-master's certificate students will take an abbreviated course called N6085. Just an FYI, N6085 is a course that cannot be weighed for any post-master's certificate student. Non-APRN post-master's certificate students will be required to take N6085 and in 6075 as well. The MSN clinical courses are required to be taken by all master's students. These courses include the three P's, pathophysiology, pharmacology, and physical assessment. Post-master's students will be required to submit syllabi to determine if courses in this area can be waived. FMP specialty courses. These courses provide content necessary to practice across the lifespan. These courses also include three clinical practicum courses where FMP students are to accrue 630 clinical hours to meet the criteria for graduation. Nurse midwifery dual students will complete clinical hours, but their hours are integrated throughout the nurse midwifery FMP dual curriculum. Post master students typically have plans of study that vary in credit hours. The number of credit hours typically depends solely on the applicant's gap analysis. Non-APRN students will be required to submit syllabi for the three P courses. APRN applicants will have these courses waived. You may submit additional syllabi for review. However, if they are not primary care courses, they will not be accepted for transfer of credit. 
Transfer of credit also depends on the transfer credit policy. All students may be required to drive up to 150 miles. Due to the saturation of urban areas, most students, OMTA and MTA, will more than likely find their site in more rural areas. The clinical placement process is a team effort between the faculty, our clinical placement office, and you. For OMTA students, please be sure to review the placement video on the admitted page for details on starting the process. If you are a part-time student, watch the video, but know that a lot of the details are not relevant until the end of your first year. All MTA students are admitted with the understanding that you may have to drive up to 150 miles one way for a clinical site. This may include some areas of Northern Alabama and Southern Kentucky. You will have the opportunity to request specific sites or populations during the orientation period. However, this does not guarantee placement. Also, MTA students should not, by any means, search for your own placements. Clinical placement does this for us. Searching for a site will cause confusion for our clinical site partners and has typically resulted in the loss of a clinical site. F&P clinical courses. As stated before, clinical rotations include a total of 630 clinical hours. This equates to about three days per week through the spring and summer semesters. Here you have a breakdown of the clinical credit hour requirement per course and month for the academic year. Nurse midwifery F&P clinical courses have similar requirements. Clinical rotations are typically completed in the first and second spring semesters. Nurse midwifery F&P dual students have to accrue a total of 560 clinical hours with it being a total of about three days a week at minimum to meet graduation. Here, you see that N6545 has a total of 140 hours for January through April of the first year. The remaining 420 hours are accrued through the spring semester of the second year. Please note that attendance at the VUSN orientation is mandatory for all students. Pre-specialty or non-nursing and associate degree nursing students will attend the VUSN orientation in August. You are also required to attend orientation at an FMP specific orientation in the August of your second year. These dates are announced during the spring preceding your specialty year. Be sure to note these dates as orientation cannot be missed. For BSN or post master's certificate students, the VUSN school orientation is mandatory as well. If you are on a part-time plan of study, you will attend the August school orientation and F&P orientation during the first year. You will then have a meeting during the second year orientation to reintroduce you to the program and things you need to know related to clinical placement for your specialty year. Here are a few expectations that we have of you for the program. Your expectations. You, as a student, should expect well-prepared and enthusiastic faculty. You should expect an environment that fosters learning, that is safe, non-judgmental, and faculty that are available and accessible to you. We, as faculty, expect respectful interactions, responsible class and clinical preparation, class attendance, and professionalism. Our ultimate goal for you is your development and growth as a novice FNP. Courses are offered in a block format each semester. The block schedule is usually posted online for your viewing. Block means that we present classes in an asynchronous and synchronous format, in a hybrid format. It is a modified distance program which means that you are required to be on campus at specific times during specific dates. For the F&P program, there are currently nine scheduled blocks, which usually last anywhere from three to five days. These blocks typically include flipped classroom format learning, meaning that you have preparation outside of the classroom of reading and lectures, but then with opportunities for face-to-face -face lectures as well. Other activities during the block session include skill sessions, simulations, case sessions, and other interactive learning activities. 
Here is an example of the block schedule. Here you see class scheduled for courses N6030, N6011, and N6020. If you are a full-time student, you will attend all of these classes. If you are a part-time student, you will only attend those classes in which you are enrolled for your second year. In this case, that would be N6011. Part-timers, please take note that during your first year, your courses are asynchronous. And so the block schedule outside of orientation does not pertain to you. Located at the bottom of the block schedule is the textbook list. We are currently working to update it to include your textbooks for fall for your budgeting purposes. Some of these textbooks will be available through Eskin Library, but be aware that there are only a limited number of licenses, so all cannot use them at the same time. There are two important documents that all students should review upon admission. The first would be the student handbook. It contains important information related to the academic calendar, your plan of study, expected behaviors of professionalism and attire, social media use, and relevant academic policies. Also be sure to review your course syllabus for each course. It contains specifics related to the course, learning activities, attendance policy, and assignment submission. Your syllabus is your contract between you and your faculty. All courses will be delivered via the online learning platform, Brightspace. Each course will have its own pin on your homepage. In the course, it will include specifics such as your syllabus, details related to assignments, and any relevant policies related to the course, such as the blood and body fluid exposure policy for clinical courses. Also, please know that courses requiring testing will have one testing window and will typically be conducted via Remote Proctor, a test proctoring software. Specifics related to this software is detailed in the student handbook. Please understand that the testing window is specialty specific and considers all other specialties who may be impacted. All courses will be closed indefinitely two weeks after the course has officially ended. Students will receive a notice at two weeks and two days before a course is closed. This provides students the opportunity to download any information that they may need for the duration of the program. We know that you are excited to begin this journey and your potential national certification. However, please be aware that there is only one way to sign your name on legal documents, emails, etc. The signature on the left is the only approved signature that students should use to reduce confusion amongst clinical partners, patients, and other potential stakeholders. Please be mindful of your communication. Be sure that you're tactful and respectful in your communication. Be patient. Make sure that when you're talking to faculty, you introduce yourself, whether face-to-face, -face, on the phone, or via email. Refer to faculty by their appropriate title. For example, you would refer to me as Dr. Pitts and not Courtney. Use your Vanderbilt email for correspondence and make sure that you check daily. Refrain from comparing to other programs within VUSN. Even though we are all a part of the VUSN culture, FMP has its own culture and rules as far as program expectations. Email etiquette. Please be sure to not bold or capitalize font in emails. Please address all faculty by their appropriate title. Allow at least two business days for response once you have sent an email. And please be professional at all times. Incivility. Academic entitlement is the tendency to possess an expectation of academic success without taking personal responsibility for achieving that success. There are several myths related to academic performance. The first is, Knowledge is a right and students should receive it with minimal exertion and discomfort. The second, instructors will provide all necessary information and guidance necessary to be successful in the course. Number three, the instructor is responsible for student success or failure in the classroom. And number four, all students should receive equal recognition regardless of individual effort put forth. And lastly, 
Aggressive confrontations with instructors or school administrators are acceptable if student expectations are not met. Please understand that these are all myths. We expect all students to be prepared for each class and each block session. We will give you all the tools that you need to be successful in our program. However, it is your effort that would successfully get you through the program to graduation and becoming a novice safe FNP. During the course of the academic year, you will have to go through the advisement process. This process will be triggered by an email from Sarah Donahoe in the nursing school's registrar's office. The FMP usually does advisement in a group format. Individual faculty have different processes for removing holes related to advisement. They will discuss with you how they will handle this when we meet in groups during the August orientation. Part-time students and post-master certificate students will be advised by the academic director. Advisement for part-time students during the first year, which is asynchronous, will take place via email. Postmaster students should check in with their advisor, who is the academic director, after a group session if there are any questions about their gap analysis. Chat and Chew. The FNP program has Chat and Chew sessions to help promote relationships between faculty and students due to us having a hybrid program. In these sessions, we address topics like work-life balance, professional growth, and leadership development. These sessions are hour-long sessions on a day during block. It usually includes a structured activity for 30 to 40 minutes, with the remaining time being allocated for informal interaction between students and faculty. The April session usually is the most attended session as it focuses on certification and licensure. Another source of information is our Frequently Asked Questions page. It contains some of the information presented here, but also links so that you can go to more specific information related to the program, the plan of study, curriculum, and block programs. Here are additional resources that students may need to use. The first is the Student Access Services, or EAD. If for whatever reason you need accommodations for medical or class-related issues, please feel free to contact EAD to get those accommodations met so that you are successful within our program. Also, the Office of Student Care Coordination includes such offices as the University Counseling Center, the Student Health, and the Center for Student Wellbeing. These are all resources that are at your fingertips. Again, my name is Dr. Courtney Pitts. I'm the academic director of the FMP program and the co-director of the Nurse Midwifery FMP dual program. If there are any questions that I have not answered on this video, please feel free to contact me at the phone number below or the preferred method at the email courtney.j.pitts at vanderbilt.edu. Again, welcome to our program and we will be so excited to see you in August.